On Sunday, the family and I went to an indoor play centre and I decided to take my field recorder to see what sounds could be found that I could later sample onto the Digitact to make some cool beats with. At the play centre, they had an air hockey game and I instantly thought, wow, this thing sounds amazing and all of the sounds that I'd recorded up to that point became less exciting. We played the game and recorded the audio with the field recorder. Later I got home and sampled from the field recorder into the Digitact and immediately made up a beat. Following that I decided to make a free jam which you can find on my channel, it's free jam 15. Since then I've made two more beats with the air hockey game and um, I think that it just seems like there's an endless amount of things that you can actually do with it. In this video, I'm going to document the process of making a beat with the recordings from the air hockey game. So these are just the default sounds that come with an empty pattern, at least on my Digitact. If we have a look at the samples that I took from the air hockey game, we um, have a quick listen through them. Um, here we are. A single hit. Another single hit and then the rest of them are just longer I think I got bored by this time of cutting out single hits and I thought maybe I should just take longer sequences and actually it's much more beneficial because there's some kind of physical dynamic that happens with um, you can hear here you can hear it going into the goal another goal uh, another nice goal you can hear the kids playing in the background, I actually quite like that. Um, you could consider it's a very noisy sample, but no, I think it adds to the character. So uh, there's about 10 or 11 of these. Um, it goes up to 10, but there's one that's been named incorrectly. So the first thing to do is find ourselves a kick drum, then we'll find ourselves maybe a hi-hat or a snare or the other way around. Um, I think I'm going to take that goal right there um, as the kick drum. So um, assigned it to the kick already by just simply selecting that. Um, what was it? it was six. Yep. And we just need to to trim this down to um, change the start point. Get this goal. Make sure we don't have too much guff. I've still not figured out how to zoom in. I don't, actually, I don't think you can zoom in at this point. Um, and then let's change the end. So now we've got something not quite representing the kick drum yet, um, but it's a short sample. Let's change uh, the um, envelope on that. So yeah, it fades almost immediately. So kick drum, we want it to be loud and thuddy. Um, we can take down, um, we can use a low pass filter here um, to, to get into those lower regions um, of frequency. Um, it's quite low. Maybe overdrive. Let's overdrive that. It's starting to sound a little bit more promising. Adjust the filter envelope. Um, still not quite um, there. A bit of resonance gives a bit more thud. A lot of resonance. So it's starting to sound kicky. A real low filter there. Maybe we take the frequency down to um, an octave down now. Crank that overdrive up. We've got something that sounds kickish. Oh, we're reversing it. Did something. Let's play it forwards. So here. 
getting into kick realms. I think that'll do me for my kick. So on the next one, oh, I've already loaded one in there. Um, choose a snare-like sound, but let's do the same thing. Go to um, source page. Let's choose another sample. Oh, that first one's actually real nice, but I've used, I think I've used that before. The second, the second hit there is real nice. Um, so I'll choose that as my snare. So we check out the second hit. That, yep. And uh, where is the end? Maybe leave some trailing on the end there. That can be useful, especially when um, when editing each individual uh, trigger in like trigger lock mode, I think they call it. There's our snare. Kick in the snare. Let's find a hi-hat, go back to the source, um, source page. Let's have a look through the air hockey samples. First one. Oh, there's Klingling on the second, the kind of second hit. I will adjust the start point to there. There, these could make a nice, nice hat, a bell-like hat. Sounds like glass. Let's go and adjust the uh, envelope. Cool. So the hi hat. Let's start by laying down a hi hat. Um, very simple. Let's see. Um, hitting on all all sixteen uh, triggers. It's really fast. I kind of don't really like fast tempos, but because um, I like reggae music, you know, they take the tempo down a bit. Where reggae music does go sometimes quite fast and go up over a hundred. Um, but mainly it sticks below the realms of one hundred. Um, as low as 60, I believe it can go. Some Bob Marley songs were like 60, 62 or more. The 68's cool. Let's go for something a bit faster. Let's go for 70. Let's go 76. Yes, yeah, my my year of birth. So it's kind of a boring hat. We want to add a little bit dynamic. And then um, what I like to do, or what I've done with a couple of other beats, um, let's put some swing in there too. Nice. So, um, all my other beats, I've added some LFO on the start point, which will slightly, you know, modify the sample start point. I think it's, yes, yeah, sample start here. Let's confirm that, but only a little bit of depth. So, add a little bit of depth to the LFO, maybe 0.10, and um, let's randomize that. If you give it extreme values, you'll be able to hear that it, it goes off. You can keep on adjusting until you get some variation in that hat. But that's too much, you've got to... So here. Okay, I mean 28 is pretty good, and it's kind of a randomized variation. Let's go to 20, just to make it very subtle. Now, um, taking the velocity down on some of these, um, I think um, every second one, you can do this in batches, which is cool, so you can hold down two buttons. Let's go to the page where there's Actually, instead of velocity, let's let's try and change it to another sample. Um, so we can adjust the start point for just a few of our um, triggers. So you know, so we can lock these parameters to each. Um, to we can lock these parameters to each trig. So let's adjust the start point of these. Let me go to what's this one here. Let's try that. And if I remove a load of them there in blocks of two, so it's every second one is our trig. Not really liking that. Let's find something else. What's this one over here? That might do. Yep, 
in blocks of two again, so it's every second trick, but I'm doing them two at a time to save me a little bit of time. So this is probably not so interesting until we get that hat in. So let's get the kick in first. Um, let's get the hat, the snare in. I'll put that on. I did actually put that on snare. I put the hat on three, which is Tom, but I don't actually pay attention to, to any of these um, labels, although I probably should. Um, so I put a regular kick down on the first beat, on the third beat, and one on the end, which this one on the end plays all the time, but what I like to do is put some variation in there. The drummer might not always be, you know, bouncing um, on the kick drum on exactly the same point. Um, so we can adjust that and, and go actually go to the trick page, give it a condition of only to play maybe 33% of the time. We can do the same thing with this um, snare. But what I would like to do, we could do the same thing with this um, snare, put some snares in that are not always played. These two, good trick. Hold them both down at the same time. You can adjust the parameter of these at the same time. So let's make that 33%. So these offbeat um, snares that I put in here will not be played all the time. Uh, maybe we can also adjust the start point to give them a little bit of variation. So if I hold them down and just pick up the start point. Cool. So the hats are interesting, but they kind of share the same frequency space. Um, if we go back to to the hat, then we can change, go to the filter page, change it to a high pass filter. It kind of gets rid of them, right? But um, if we adjust the frequency until we come into a frequency range. The frequency range that doesn't share the same frequency range as the snare and the uh, kick drum. So let's add a little bit of variation to this. Um, the clap, let's replace that with another sample. Go back to the source page. Let's choose another. I like that. And um, kind of like it the way it is. Again, we can put that um, somewhere. Let's put it on, on, the, on the eighth trig. But let's again put a, a condition on there um, of say 33% again. It's going to play sometimes, not all the time. Adding a little bit of variation. We can do this kind of thing um, in many places. Cowbell, let's replace the cowbell. Another sample. That's a goal. Let's stop this so we can hear exactly what we've got. There's some nice stuff in there. Let's have a little look at the start points. See if we can select something that's... And a nice bit of percussion. Let's put some of that in. Um, Take down the uh, envelope a bit so it decays faster. That's, that's cool, you can hear those kids there. Thousands of them in that play centre. So, um, we've not put any reverb on here, we'll try a bit of that. Overdrive is always really great for making that sound, you know, they made the kick drum very boomy from something that wasn't actually that boomy. A little bit of reverb on the kick helps, although I discourage that when making reggae music on the snare and the hat is fine, although we're not making a reggae beat here, so fairly straightforward break. Um, it's 
So we got this guy. Let's put this guy in somewhere. Um, I like to use this um, these um, and let's lay some down. So I'm gonna lay some down on every first one like this. Um, it's gonna sound pretty noisy if I play it, but the point here, what I want to do with this um, is to first only have a conditioner on that, but I'll set that in a second, um, to put some um, retrigs on there. So 24th retrig with a swing is very nice, I discovered um, the other day with the first beat that I made with this air hockey, with these air hockey samples. So 24 tricks, let's see what that sounds like. We also actually, again, you can adjust it in blocks of two. I want to change the velocity here. So the velocity fades. The velocity fades on every one of these um, tricks. Let me see what this sounds like. <clears throat> Interesting, but overpowering. Let's turn it down a bit. So, I don't want this to play all the time, um, so let's put some conditional conditions on these tricks. Um, say only, you know, th let's go for thirty-three percent of the time. But the first one, thirty-three percent of the time. The next one will say only if the previous one played. Only if the previous one played. So it's kind of like a a little percussive fill that plays on top of the beat. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. Interesting. We could vary that um, with um, like an LFO, or we could also adjust the frequency range. Let's just start with this. Let's first let's first drive this a little bit more. Cut out the low frequency by taking a high pass. And then um a bit of envelope. Just kind of more hat percussive like again. Um can we the problem is with these these uh <laughs> percentage conditions is that you have to wait for them to play again. There he goes. And another thing is, um, let's have that fade in. So if I go back to record, we start off the volume fairly low, like let's say six, 12, the next one 15, we'll do 20, let's build this up, 30, 40, 60, 70, and finally the last one, maybe on 75, so it kind of fades in this thing, and maybe a little bit of variation, like we did before, with a random LFO, a depth that's not so radical. to adjust um, what I want to LFO and that is actually the sample the sample start point which is right there not so high 70 50 oh, 50 will do swing 58 swing 63 swing interesting Make some 
adjustments, that kick. Snare. This one's had no special attention in terms of overdrive. Much bigger with a bit of overdrive. A bit of reverb also helps. Just make our reverb a bit longer. Interesting hi hat, more like a, a bell like sound. Take, take a look at the take a look at the envelope on that. Filter envelope, sorry. Cool. So um, we know that our hat is uh, hidden on every beat there. Maybe add some uh, retrigs. Sixteenth retrig. Let's have a final listen to what we got. We got a kick, more kicky, not so down bassy, but that can be an advantage because if you've got a real sub bass sound, you don't really want to fight in with the frequencies of kick drums, so you don't make your kick drums too subby, and unless you intend your kick drum to also be the bass. I love this uh, ricochet on this snare that can be varied so um, if we play the beat back um, we can see where we're hitting on the snares here let's make the let's make these two snares have a, a shorter decay It sounds like a car trying to rev up the kind of fill thing, fading in fill, 24 three triggers um, that we put in there, these guys, when that comes in it sounds like a, a car engine that's uh, failing to start, interesting. So if you got this far, Thanks for listening, and if you also want to make some beats with the air hockey samples, I put the full samples that I sampled into the Digitact at the end of this video, which you can just resample back into your Digitact, and maybe if you make some cool things with it, you can put the link down in the comments below, that would be cool, and if you want to keep up with my new videos, then maybe subscribe. So, until next time, keep on jamming.